Okay, this is an example where they give us a graph of a sine or a cosine function, and they want us to come up with the equation of that graph. So this can be this is gonna be a pretty tricky example. Let's go through it. Let's use the help we have from the notes. From a graph, find the equation. How do we do it? Well, start with the general form of the equation and then find the midline. Okay, so let's go find it. Now, what's the general form? Well, this one's tricky because it doesn't, here's this, here's the center zero, it, it hits right here. It's not, it's not at its top or its bottom, is it? Remember, remember how these things work. A sine graph starts in its middle, right, and then goes high and low, whereas a, a cosine graph starts at the top or the bottom. Um, it, 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 actually, let me, let me say that a little bit better. A cosine graph starts at his top if he's a positive cosine graph, and he starts at his bottom if he's a negative cosine graph, right? So sine graphs start in their middle. Cosine graphs start at their top or their bottom. They don't start in their middle. Well, this graph is sort of in between, isn't it? It's right here at zero. And when we say start, start, start means at x equals zero. So at x equals zero right here on this line, boom, it's right there. Well, that's not really its top. Right here, here's the bottom, here's the top, here's the middle. That's not the, right, this is the top, this is the bottom, this is the middle. So this one doesn't really start in his top, his bottom, his middle. It's sort of just shifted a little bit, right? It's, it's got a horizontal shift, doesn't it? And we'll get to that in a little bit. So the fact is we really could represent this as sine or cosine. Really, either, either one is possible. It just says find a sinusoidal. You could really do sine or cosine. Looks like it's closer to cosine. And see how they specifically mention the point negative 13, negative 2, which is right here, and uh, 1, negative 2 over 1, down to right here. So they specifically say the curve, um, the curve above is a graph of a sinusoidal function. It goes through the points, boom and boom. It goes from there to there, they mention. What does that look like? Uh, well, of course, sine and cosine look the same, but I mean, when it starts low and ends low, that piece is a cosine piece, isn't it, right? Because cosine starts top or bottom. Specifically, that one would, you know, going from here to there, that's, that's starting at your bottom, right? So that's a negative cosine graph. So our function then is going to be, let's just write right here, y equals a cosine bx plus c plus d. And next it says, find the midline. The midline is the middle height, and that's D. D is the middle height of the graph. So let's go find the middle height of this graph. This graph, its middle is right on zero, isn't it? And, and I know I've used middle in two different ways. I mean its middle height. So what's its middle height? So this is the middle height. The middle height is zero. So the D is just zero for us. So this is the middle height. We have the middle sideways and we have the middle height. That's where this gets confusing. So the middle height is zero. And then the amplitude, as it says down here, the amplitude is how far the graph goes above and below its middle. So how far does our graph go above its middle and below its middle? Looks like two, down two and up two. Right? So the amplitude is 2. 2 cosine bx plus c oops, plus 0. But notice one thing. Hold on. The, um, if I'm going to, if I'm going to consider this, why don't we, why don't we do this? Why don't we consider this the start there's like a cycle. So if this is the starting point, oops, right there. If 
fact, actually, it'd be good maybe to do it with something like that. So there's the start. That's the starting point. Well, then it starts on its bottom. When cosine graphs start in their bottom, they're a negative cosine graph. So this is a negative 2. So the amplitude is negative 2. Well, amplitude is 2, but we put a, a is negative 2. We put a negative in front there. Whenever a cosine graph starts at, at the bottom of his arc, when it starts at the bottom and goes like that, or same thing over here, it starts at the bottom and goes like that, then when he starts his cycle at the bottom, now you might say, well, couldn't we just take this part and say that's the start and it goes like that? You're right, we totally could. And we could make that work and then that would be a shift, a horizontal shift to there. This is closer to zero, so I'm just going to take this as the start and shift this back less. So you really you could do anything you want. Now that we're involving shifts, we could make this a sign graph and say here's where he starts. He starts in his middle and we'll just shift this back. The fact is this graph is sinusoidal, which means it could be written as a sine graph with a shift, a cosine gra graph with a shift, a positive cosine with a shift, a negative cosine. There's all kinds of options. Just pick where you want to start and shift it and, and handle it. So I said, well, this is the closest point there. To, to zero, so I'll call that the start. And if that's the start, then the cycle goes like this, and that's starting on the bottom. That kind of cycle starts on the bottom. Instead, normally cosine starts high, goes low, goes back high. That's the normal cosine way. So starting on the bottom, we're going to, we've got a negative. If you're going to write it this way, it's a negative cosine. So it's a negative two cosine. All right. Got to find B and C now. How do you find B? B comes from the period, which is the width of one cycle. So we've got to come up here and think about the width of one cycle. Now, where is the one cycle? Well, I sort of did it from here to there. That'd be one cycle, right? Because you remember how cosine works. Cosine starts, in this case, on this bottom and finishes on this bottom. But the problem is this, I don't know where this is exactly. It kind of goes off the screen. So instead, let's do this. Let's go backwards. It doesn't matter. In fact, that's what they told us anyway. So that would be easiest. We'll just use that cycle. And where does that go? They, they explicitly told us it goes from negative 13 here to positive 1, doesn't it? That's one cycle of the cosine. You could go to the right or the left. It just repeats forever. It doesn't matter. And remember, the period... Let me get rid of this writing here. The period equals the width of one cycle. That's what the period is. It's the width of one cycle. So what is the period? It goes from what? Negative 13 to, if you can read it over here, positive 1. Negative 13 to positive 1. That's a distance of 14. Positive, period is always positive. Why? Because it's a width, right? If you, if you, if you asked how, what's the width of that table and somebody said negative 13 or negative 14, you'd give them a funny look because we all know width is positive. So period is a width. Period is positive 14 because it goes from negative 13 to positive 1. That's 14. So the period is 14. Okay, so what? Bring that on down here. Periods 14, and then there's a formula for period. Period is 2 pi over b. So 2 pi over b is 14. We can use this to solve for b now. Diagonal, diagonal. 2 pi times 1 is 14b. 2 pi is 14b. Finish solving for b. Divide by 14 on both sides. This goes in there like that, pi over 7. So b is pi over 7. So we got our hands on b, pi over 7. Now, all we got left is c. We got b right here, pi over 7 for b. All we got left is c, but that's a little tricky. How do we get c? Well, it says to find c, start by thinking about the middle of the graph and whether there's a horizontal shift at the middle or not. So, in our case, we've already said there is a horizontal shift, right? 
here's the starting point. See, right there's the starting point. And that's not smack on the middle, is it? Right? It's, um, oops, I probably shouldn't have got rid of this is important. Anyway, um, yeah, look at this. It, instead of it zero, the middle has been shifted to the right. So the middle, or the start, let's say the start, the start has been shifted right one, hasn't it? It's starting here at one instead of zero. It's starting at 1. It's starting at its bottom. So it's a negative cosine function starting one unit to the right. The horizontal sideways shift is right 1. So we have a horizontal shift. Horizontal shift that is plus 1. That's for right one. If it was left one, you would do negative for left, positive for right. So it's so what? So we got that. All right. Well, it says right here, horizontal shift is negative C over B. So horizontal shift, ne negative C over B equals 1. We know B right there, pi over 7. So negative C over pi over 7 is 1. Let's solve this for C. Put it over 1. Diagonal, diagonal, cross multiply. Negative C times 1 is 1 times pi over 7. So negative C is pi over 7. Multiply both sides by negative 1 or divide by negative 1. Same thing. Two negatives make a positive. C is negative pi over 7. Interesting. C is negative pi over 7. So we found everything now. We can write the equation. It is negative 2 cosine b is positive pi over 7 here. x plus c plus a negative pi over 7. So that's really just minus pi over 7. And then the plus 0, we don't need to show that. There it is. We found the function the, that describes that graph. And there's other ways to do it. You could, we could have made it a positive cosine graph with a different shift or a positive or negative sign, as, as I talked about. There we go.